ヒールの出番です。ヒロガルスカイプリキュア or ソーリングスカイプリキュア is finally here with us. The first episode just aired. I just watched it and I'm in awe. What a great first episode this was. It was funny, it was intense, it was emotional. Lots of great things for us to talk about. I am super hyped over this season. This first episode really left a great impression on me. So let's start talking about it. First of all, I just want to say that I really love Sora as a protagonist. She is brave. But she is also insecure. She has a few screws loose, but she is not as insane as some other leads we had. I feel like she is the perfect balance of every single Precure main character we've had so far. Imagine you putting all of the Precure leaders or leads in a blender, you would get her. At least that's the impression I got after watching this first episode. And I feel like this. The cast of this season is really strong. Mashiro seems super sweet, and it feels like she is gonna have an energy that will match Sora's. She's not that peaceful. L also seems to be super adorable and super energetic. Kabatan, the villain, was super fun as well. I think he was a very interesting villain because he was not only. Your regular villain, you know, he was really evil. And he was not only evil, but he was also.、Uh, he also played dirty. When you think the fight will be fair, even with Sora as Sora, he was playing dirty to try to make her lose. That was so cool. Anyways, this episode showed us Sora going to Skyland, I mean, to the palace, to the castle, because we were celebrating. Elle's birthday, and I really loved that moment in which we saw that little pig, that big pig actually, behind Elle, and then it was actually the villain who kidnapped her and left a little pig in her place. That was so cool. And I also like the fact that he is always using powers to stop other people, and you know, he was really. Playing the evil part in this moment. And it's nice when you look at Skyland, that it seems to be a place full of birds, which is an interesting fact for us to pay attention to. A cure that will appear later on in Hirogaru. But you know, the real goat of that first moment was actually Sora. Before that,、uh, when、uh, Elle's father was talking about her and he said something about the Kira Kira daughter he had or something, it kind of reminded me of Cure Star's introduction phrase from Star to Winkle. I just wanted to leave this observation here because, you know, I want to put Star to Winkle in everything, it's one of my favorites. And Sora was gorgeous with her parkour. I loved that. It's gonna be an iconic moment for us to remember years and years from now. Pretty sure of that. And the way Sora stopped in front against Kabaton, and you know, she ran after him. She was so brave in that moment. He was running with everything he had, and she did the same. She was able to retrieve Elle, but then she ended up losing for the Welcome to Heaven power. <laughs> I was not expecting to see something like that in Precure. <laughs> And look, Kabaton is kind of a hot villain, you know? I, I, I find him hot. Let's just say this. And, you know, that scene really caught me off guard, but then、uh, all the other interactions they had. It was really great, and the way Sora was really fighting for her hero position and to save Elle, it was really nice to see. I really liked that detail on her character, but then there were other things that, you know, put other layers onto Sora as a character. I'm gonna get there. Then they arrive on Earth, they arrive on Sora Shido City, and that scene of Sora and Mashiro meeting was truly amazing. The comedy, the tone, the pacing, everything was superb. I loved it. It was so funny. And 
Elton arriving on Earth and then laughing like she had fun on that moment. Girl, Elle, you're gonna be a chaotic baby. I can sense it. You are adorable. I really like El Chun for now. And, you know, the way they exchanged a little bit of words and the way Mashiro asked for a timeout because it was too much for her, I love that. And here is something I really liked about Mashiro. She is quieter than Sora. She's not as energetic as her, but she is still an energetic girl. You know, she's not a shy, quiet type. Not at all. I didn't find her that way, at least in this episode. She has an energy that will match Sora throughout the season. I hope so. I mean, in this episode, I feel like her energy matched her, even though she was not really understanding what was going on. So in certain moments, she was quieter because she was shocked <laughs> throughout everything. But, you know, I really like that first interaction they had, but then Capitan arrived and, you know, the chaos continued. In that moment, we have some things to pay attention to. The first one is that screen that showed a Pretty Holic ad. That screen was on our screen for a long time. So I don't know if that is them trying to sell us <laughs> Pretty Holic, which works because Pretty Holic is a gorgeous toy line or makeup line or whatever you want to call it, but it's a great merch line for sure. Or if that means something, who's that person on the ads? Is that person someone important that is going to be part of the show later on or no? And then at the same time, we have Kabaton uh, summoning the monster of the season, Lumborg. <laughs> And I like the summoning animation. It's very fast and very simple. I like it. It's effective. And when he does, someone on the street says that uh, the, the, the scenery looks like a cure tube scenario. So there is a pre-cure YouTuber in the Hirogaru Sky pre-cure universe. I'm already a fan. And I, I have seen people theorizing that it's actually Cure Butterfly because we know nothing about Butterfly as a character as of now. So just imagine if Cure Butterfly is actually a cure tuber as they were, they're calling in the show. So pre-cure is a concept that seems to exist in this show already. It's, it, it's probably not something new. Maybe they're talking about past seasons of pre-cure. Maybe I can become a cure too. Well, this is the theme of Hirogaru Sky, right? I don't know. But still, uh, we have then uh, some pretty strong moments. And I feel like we have, a, we have two very nice moments. One of them is uh, Mashiro holding Sora's hand and saying, don't go, and then Sora goes. But at that moment, she notices that Sora is shaking. So far, uh, we've seen Sora being very brave and she is trying her best to be a hero. But after that, we see another layer of her character. She's actually scared of what she's doing. She doesn't have experience in being a hero, but now she is trying to be one and she, is, uh, she has to, to face a situation in which she will be, she will need to step up and be a hero. And that makes her scared. We haven't seen that prior, but she was probably scared on the other scenes of this episode that she was heroic. She was probably scared of in those moments too. And it's nice that Mashiro was the character that was used for, uh, for, for the narrative to show us that Sora is actually scared. And then we have Sora going after uh, the Lamborg and we see Kabaton playing dirty. And here's another thing, I, I already said it, Here's the thing I love about it. He was playing dirty. He was, he's a dirty villain. He doesn't care about a fair fight at all. And that's a nice thing about a villain. I love it. And he is going after Mashiro then because he is after El's power. Here's another important thing about the villains of this season. Underg Empire is after El's power. What powers do this girl hold? I mean, we already know 
that uh, she holds the precure power somehow, so she is probably a powerful entity, a powerful being. Do her parents know about it? Do Skyland knows about it or no? Is this a mystery? Or, and the villains know. And it's interesting that he thinks that Sora is after Elle's power and not actually going after to save her. But then he starts to understand that Sora is actually trying to be a hero. And that scene was so tough to watch. And that is why I like Kabaton as a villain. He picked Sora's notebook and he ripped it apart. He played and toyed and stepped on her feelings. He didn't care about it at all. That was a very tough scene to watch because I was already uh, being very affectionate towards Sora. Then there was one specific page that was there untouched, which is I have to step up and confront the monsters, no matter how strong they seem to be. And that's what she did. And Mashiro was watching everything in awe. I was watching everything in awe. Elle was also scared, but also watching everything. And at that moment, her precure powers appeared. And I was, I found that very nice because uh, it was actually Sora who awoke that power. It wasn't Elle who created the power and gave it to Sora. No, it was Sora who, you know, that power awoke inside of her and Elle used her powers to kind of like bless her. But at that moment when she screamed, Purikula! You know, I love the way she just turns around and gets, she just gets the power that Elle sent her and then she just transforms. Baby, what was that? And the transformation scene is so beautiful, so different from everything we've ever had in the franchise. 20th season of Precure and they are able to bring something completely different than everything. I love the way they interact the toy with the transformation itself and the animation. It looked gorgeous and so different than everything I've seen. So I absolutely loved that transformation. Girl, Cure Sky, oh my God, what a moment. I just loved it. And then, after, after Sora became Cure Sky, the next scenes kind of got me back to Futariwa. It got me back to Futariwa. I was looking at Sora flying in the sky and I was like, this more or less gave me the same feeling I had when I watched Futariwa for the first time. It was such a lovely scene. And the animation felt so cool in that moment. It just felt amazing. I loved it. And then uh, we have a kind of short fighting scene between the Landborg and Cure Sky, but everything looked super cool. I have no idea how they managed to make her look that fierce while fighting. Every single movement was so well thought and well crafted in that scene. I loved it. Honestly, I loved it. And then we have the f finishing blow, which was really good. Uh, Hirogaru Sky Punch. It was really great. I love the attack. I love the effects on the attack as well. Very, very nice. Oh my god, visually so good. Visually, it was really, really nice. And then Kabaton ends up leaving, and then we have this situation in which, am I really a hero <laughs> or not? <laughs> Who am I? What is going on with me? Because, you know, this is something new for Sada, this is something new for L. this is something new for Mashiro. But L seems to be having fun, at least, watching Mashiro fight, like, watching uh, Sada fight like that. And Mashiro was shocked with everything that happened. And the last scene was so nice. Mashiro asking Sora, are you a hero? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> that was so good. This is what she wants to be. But is she really a hero? Well, she doesn't know. And she will discover with time. Now let's just enjoy being Cure Sky. And this first episode really left a very good impression on me from this season. I feel like we're on to something really good. This is 
always happening with first episodes of Precure, <laughs> but uh, Hinogata Sky has everything to be a very solid and strong season. Very colorful, very bright, a little chaotic as well. I really enjoyed it, and I really felt like this was a great start, and it's really hero time. It's really time for us to showcase our heroic sides and root for Soda to become the strongest hero the world has ever seen. I just cannot wait to see more of Soda, her interactions with Mashiro, L, the villains, so many other things for us to check out. In the next episode, we're gonna meet Mashiro's grandmother and also an orange bird. I am very curious. I'm very curious. And overall, I think Hirogato had a great first episode. Now let's enter a new corner that I am thinking of doing for Hirogato Sky. My favorite moment from episode one was Mashiro holding Sora's hand and noticing she was shaking. I think even though the whole episode was amazing and the hero moments were also amazing, I think that little scene added a lot to Sora's character, so that was my favorite. What was your favorite scene from the first episode? Please leave a comment in the comment box, let's keep talking about it! Anyways babies, this is all for now, I want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel, thank you so much for your support, I am really blessed to be able to have your support on Magical Cinnamon, you really motivate me to keep on going, you are my heroes! Thank you very much. And if you've watched up to now, thank you so much as well. You're also a hero. It's hero time! Bye-bye!